be doing that at six. Cool. <laughs> so. Oh, I didn't realize. I just thought, you know, that legislatures also had diplomatic plates. Interesting. Well, I'll have you know they were at least abiding the speed limit. That's good. <laughs> so I've been in Virginia where they go down the highway in Virginia at like 100 miles per hour. Yep. <laughs> Are these all the same for this? Because there's different groups of them. There's, there's the first group, which is all that was submitted in 2011. Mm-hmm. And then... Okay. And then there's new ones. Uh, this is all from 11. And then the second packet, which is the one you sent out. <coughs> the uh, middle street is at 6. I know. Another yeah, yeah. First, so. yeah. Okay, as long as you come, you're being here for a bit. We're we both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you both. There's no extra charge to stay for two meetings. Have you received word when the others are arriving? It's after five. Jesse said to start, asked me to start without him. You can start without him as well. You're a quorum. <laughs> no, we can start without Jesse. He asked us to, but we kind of should have. Gene. Which one are you following? Mine. Oh, okay. That's right, there's four. Yeah, there's four of them for this, uh, this one. Owen gets. I'm already with the other guy. Uh, the meeting with the police community in the morning. Oh, okay. Great. Are you busy, Wayne? All right. I am, because the meeting officially started at 5. Oh, Hi, sir. <laughs>
So, first item is approval of minutes. Move approval. Our July 2nd. Uh, the July 2nd. Did we have? We did receive them in the session uh, today. Public safety. Just oh. the agenda and the minutes. The agenda and the minutes. Yeah. Are you. Uh, you see my yeah. yeah. I'll second. Any public comment for the public safety meeting? Go ahead and just give us your name and address. And uh, my name is Heather Skin. I live at 27 Mill Street in Florence. And um, I just uh, have a concern coming up with the upcoming uh, is it planning department that's scheduled for tomorrow. And I guess a meeting then that coincides later on, it's about a parking ordinance. And I just want to make sure that, you know, my comment to the Public Safety Committee, committee is that um, when you're looking, I guess, at these single dwellings, that at some point it would come to you guys that you, you know, look at, when we're talking about parking concerns that we're, that we're looking at bicyclists, pedestrians, and not just vehicles that, that come aboard on the street. So the next item of the agenda is a report from Chief Singlewood, who is here with us. So we'll give him the floor and let him get started. Welcome to our community room. Uh, you can see that I think some of you have been here. Maureen, I don't think you've been here. No. Mary, you haven't been here. But I mean, this is our really our training and community room. We've had different community meetings here, but we've done a, a fair amount of uh, trainings. Uh, last week we had the first of a series of three-day trainings regional trainings with an FBI instructor for, um, it's called Dust and Bust, it's fingerprint uh, collection and uh, identification. Uh, and we had 25 different uh, departments rep represented here. And the beauty is what I've said during this entire, leading up to this project, is having a place that we can actually run regional trainings instead of shipping our people to Virginia and other police departments, people to Virginia and paying for the lodging in the air for and whatnot. We can now bring the instructor up here and offer regional trainings, and it's in an exchange. Uh, we get free seats at the class, so we have three people attending it. Uh, it's a great bonus. Uh, he's going to come back every other week for the next several weeks, and uh, there'll be 25 uh, fully trained forensic uh, criminologists uh, in the valley now. So it's just one of the examples. I mean, it's just a real example here. And the fact that all the rooms, the conference rooms, are getting used, so. Overall, the building project is, is uh, back on track. We had a little hiccup recently with the demolition of the building and some unexpected asbestos uh, that was mitigated over a two-week period of time, but crews work simultaneously uh, on the same site. It's going to cost, uh, we thought, about $100,000 uh, extra, but we got it down to about $48,000. Uh, but we're back on schedule. We're still well within budget. The uh, contingency fees that were to cover the project the building builders contingency fee and the city's contingency fee uh, was a total value of 462,000 uh, we knew partway through the project that we would not be dipping into any of that um, and even with that 48,000 and some other things like the uh, air handling unit for the firing range that we decided to fund out of the contingency which was 100,000 uh, we're still targeted at having well over 100,000 left in our contingency fund and we are well into the ground garage and there's no 
expectations of anything of any consequence there. So I, I promised the citizens that we would do this within our budget and we'd do it on time and we certainly look like we will be doing that. So um, there is a posting online for a tour. Mayor Parkwitz's first mayor's whatever he calls it, not a minute because it's like an hour. <coughs> so if you haven't had an opportunity to see any of the inside you know what the date is for the tour? You said there's a date for a tour? No, no, there's the posted tour. The tour, oh. tour posted the station. Okay. You as a city councilor want to come in at any time, call me or Captain Caucus, and we'll take you through. No one's been through it. David's been through it. I don't think Jesse's been through it. I'm more than glad to do that for you. Um, and we're on track for our, our completion of the project mid-November. And shortly after that, Kind of a ceremony plan for the unveiling of the, the dedication plaque. Uh, we'll have the space to actually have people outside and set up some tents and have some restaurants in town that are um, donating appetizers. So uh, it should be a good event. But when we get a clear date, I'll give plenty of notice to the public through the media. So the building's a beautiful building. Everybody loves it. Um, our functionality is so much better. It's just it's it's a wonderful thing. So thanks for council support. And do you have any questions about that part of my presentation? Well, what's the timing on the garage? Second week in November. Be done. Okay. It'll be com the project will be complete. Mm -hmm. So they're pouring footings now. Um, they're doing the pilings this week for all the soil retention around the site. Uh, all the foundations and whatnot will be completed by October 1st. And October 3rd, the 331 preformed concrete structures come and they start assembling it like a puzzle. So and they'll complete that in six weeks. But right now, all of your operations are smoothly going right out of this building. Well, it's, we have to go through the back door to bring prisoners in a way that the building wasn't designed, so that's kind of yeah. a complication. But once we get the garage built and the deck on and we have full utilization of what we call the sally port, the prisoner entrance and whatnot, it's going to smooth things out quite a bit. But essentially, all the systems in the building, there's hiccups. There's a lot of technology involved with electronic security systems, video. You know, there's 55 cameras involved in, within the, and outside the building. Intercom systems, the video recording systems for the interview rooms, all that stuff. We're having some hiccups, but we're working through it. And we've really held all of the uh, subcontractors' feet to the fire that, you know, it's not as we asked for. So if it's not working, you pay for it. And we've struggled a bit with that, but they've pretty much all agreed to pick up their part of it and fix what needs to be fixed. So. And that forensic trainings that you did here, was that for other departments then? The yep, we had Westfield, Holyoke, UMass, I can't remember all the departments, there's 25 different officers here from other agencies, so. and we have others, other homicide classes scheduled, good stuff that's, that we're going to be doing here, so. And it throws 25 hungry people into downtown Northampton for lunch. Yeah. So it's an economic <laughs> engine, too. I won't tell you what they do after they get out of here. Building? Any more questions? Any, any questions? All right. No, I saw. I did see it uh, last month, and it was. Uh, I got it. I got a, an extensive tour, and it was uh, very impressive. And uh, I do think that uh, with some, I, I, I saw the unfinished firing range, and I think that's that will be. I think that's something we should look at trying to either from the community or from the city. Trying yeah, that will be one of the challenges, but we know when we cut the project, the original cost down from 19.7 to the 17.6 that uh, we would build the shell, we would get the HVAC unit, even that was iffy, but as I mentioned, we had the contingency money available and we were really comfortable. So we get that, you know, $350,000 range down to, you know, 250 to 200. Um, and we knew over time it could eventually be outfitted. Our old department had one, and this one would be state of the art when completed. So, okay. <clears throat> as far as activity, uh, I ran an activity report uh, up till noon today, comparing uh, uh, first uh, nine months of 2011 with these nine months of 2012. 
2011, we were up to 27,829 calls. This year, we're 32,934. That's 5,105 more calls we respond to. And that's an 18.3% increase in calls. As far as the serious crimes and offenses, 2011 was 2,487. Uh, we're up 238 to 2,725, or a 9.5% increase in the serious crimes, of the, of what we call the category of the UCR reportable crimes, the, the B and E's, and the assault and batteries with serious uh, injury, and etc. Arrests are up 79 from 779 to 858. That's 10.2%. This number I always like to see go down. Accidents, 443. We're down 63 to 380. Um, you know, if you remember 10, 10, 15 years ago, really 15 years ago, we committed to really do strong enforcement, put radar in every car, you know, uh, demand that every officer be active in traffic enforcement in each of their areas and while they're mobile and direct to deter patrols. Um, certainly we think the 10-year run of Reducing personal injury accidents in the community has, has paid off for our efforts with that. Um, and I will say we had a mild winter too, so that's pretty good. But most of the mild winter accidents are fender benders that don't get to the statistic because they're under a thousand but no personal injury. These are the over a thousand personal injury accidents, so our accident rate keeps going down. So it's down from 443 to 380? Yep. And that's year to date. All this is year to date. This is as of, right. Year compared to, to last year, year to date, to this, or all To noontime today, January 1st, 11th, to noontime today, January 1st, 2012, to noontime today. Okay, so it's it's year to year to, to today. It's a direct apples to apple comparison. Got it. From, like one, dates. from, from like this past year versus the year before, not calendar year or anything like that. Right. Just this past year to year. God, I'm sorry. The nine months, 10 days, so, yeah. 12 hours. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's calendar year to. January 1st, 2011 to September 10th, to now. Yeah. 2011 at noon. Take that period of time and you statistically compare it to the January 1st, 2012 to September right. 10th, okay. 2012 so at noon. Right. Okay. So we've been very active. You know, you've heard me talk before about our staffing levels and our needs. Um, we are well, we're participating in a city staff program. The mayor got us involved in uh, doing an analysis of uh, the University of Massachusetts Boston Collins Center um, has come in and they've chosen police departments at first to compare. And there's 15 communities that we're compared to. Um, and early reports are that we are looking pretty well um, in comparison to other communities in terms of how we manage our fleet. Uh, all preliminary information, uh, management of overtime, uh, Cambridge, Brookline, and us are the only three police departments out of these 15 that have less than 10% of their total salaries to be overtime. We're the lowest at 4%. Most other police departments are in the 20th percentile. So when those kind of numbers come up, when they complete the report, you'll see how we are managing our overtime and being efficient. Uh, there's some certain common conclusions that are drawn by that, but it's not just, well, you must be properly staffed, so therefore you don't need the overtime. No, we manage our overtime very strictly, where other agencies, as they're determining, well, if they have a vacancy, they just throw it out on overtime. They don't shift personnel to adjust to it. They don't shift people out of the detective bureau or patrol unit, you know, into the detective bureau to cover, to keep your costs down. But that'll be a more formal report. But right now, we're, we're looked at very favorably by uh, the early returns of all this data collection. And that also goes to the fact that, in spite of our personnel issues, um, you know, it was earlier this calendar year that I thought we were going to be right up there to our full budget allotment of 65 full-time police officers. Uh, we had three in the academy and three in failed tra field training then. Uh, the three that were in field training then have completed it. They're on the street. The three that graduated from the academy are in field training now. Great. I had two unexpected retirements and I had two officers leave for other departments. Mm -hmm. So right away I'm jumped into four vacancies again. And I have a fifth that's being interviewed today in another community that pays almost $10,000 a year more base pay. Same community that's grabbed two other other people. Um, quieter community, community, smaller community, not as busy. Where is it? Wilbraham. So, in the end, <laughs> 
I was five short again. Then we had an officer who had left a year ago, who had only been here two years, but was an excellent officer, and felt that he wanted to try a different career and go to nursing school, which he did. Well, about a month ago, he came back and said, you know what, I missed the job, I really want to come back, and I come back. And we went, absolutely. <laughs> he worked part-time for us while he was in school. Real good officer, he started last night. So I'm back to four short. So there's a little good news, a little bad news. We're actively recruiting fully trained police officers. We did that with, uh, uh, we've had five applications ever filed. Uh, older, older folks, different career choices, but they want to stay in police work and they work full time and they're fully trained. Uh, but as we work through the background checks, uh, we excluded two people for some amazing stories that I won't tell you. And uh, one person that withdrew herself because she didn't want to move from the eastern part of the state here. So we have two decent candidates still. We're, fun, we're going through the final phases of their selection. They've all been interviewed. They've done the thorough background checks. Um, so we're hoping those, those two will help fill in the gap here. Because at the same time, I've got four long-term injured officers out. Uh, one officer that's been out well over a year and a half with multiple surgeries for a knee that was ripped up with a uh, disturbance involving a firearm. up knee um, that's going in for surgery soon and two back problems that after almost a year of treatment and therapy and whatnot and injections are looking like they could turn into surgical procedures very soon. So I have to cover those four vacancies and I have to cover I'm a very young I have a very young department. There's a lot of family medical leave because people are having babies. I like babies, it's a good thing. But when they leave and they take their twelve weeks F M L A, those are vacancies we have to cover. So we're constantly looking to hire for our, our gaps, manage our allocation of resources, uh, keep our overtime down, and doing it with, as I described, with every, every year increasing number of calls, number of arrests, number of offenses. So uh, having the new building, we really have a place that we can put people, if I make an argument strong enough to for staffing levels. And one of the things that the city staff will show that we are our percentage by population, just residential population, is is shorter, smaller than other communities of either larger or smaller sizes. And um, some of the conclusions that will be drawn by that, I'll let the data when it's completed, but I think in the end, um, the city of Northampton is going to have to seriously look at the staffing levels here for the amount of service that we do, the extensive service, whether it's, we have one, one elderly woman with dementia that's her family still trying to keep her living at home and 116 calls since the beginning of the year we went to her house because of issues she was having or getting out in the neighborhood or whatnot <clears throat> and then other places other housing small housing projects that have a uh, challenged population you know there's you know a handful of people 100 calls those are hearing things or whatever we do those things we do the mental health for first aid training that I talked about in my budget um, presentation and all the work that we deal with all the folks that have no more safety nets for social services, psychological services, mental services, um, the multi-substance abusers, there's no services for them to get turnaround. And many of the homeless people are homeless, um, not by virtue of substance abuse, but by virtue of their economic situation, and they need services. So um, our critical intervention work that we do, uh, working with uh, community uh, service options, uh, crisis intervention team up there. You know, it's not infrequent that we're doing Section 12s. It's an everyday occurrence, sometimes three or four times a day. Uh, so it's not just the law enforcement aspect out of it, it's the community service and helping the folks that, that need our services because there's nobody else there to do it. So we're trying very hard to complete that task. You know, again, with a budget that was not a dime more than last year's, and very little higher than the year before. And the day will come. We need to have a serious conversation about it. So I've quickly gone over all these things, give you the highlights, the lowlights. If you have particular questions, I'm certainly glad to answer them. Any questions? Yeah, um, I'd like to actually ask you briefly about, to explain what the um, department does with a, with a special police officer. Special officers are ceremonial officers. By accreditation, um, they have to have full-time training. 
and therefore retired. They have to maintain their 140 hours a year training, uh, but they have no legitimate law enforcement powers. We don't have the power to arrest or the power to write a violation because they're special police officers. Um, they no, work. No power to arrest, no power to write any violation? No, sir. They are ceremonial. We use them for professional but inexpensive crowd control for the various multiple weekend events that we have, the rallies, the demonstrations. Uh, these, these are folks that we can come in that we know are well trained, professional. that can add to our numbers, and they work side by side with a sworn police officer to ensure that uh, if any law enforcement action has to be taken, they can take it. And what, what do they, do they get paid on a daily basis, hourly? Hourly basis. Hourly? Is it sliding scale, or is it a single dollar amount, or what? I think it's, don't quote me, I don't have the sheet, but it's right around $12 an hour. And in our case, they're all retired from this department, so they're well known with one exception, which was a waiver that we got from years ago. Mm -hmm. But so they're all people who work, did a career here that are known, know the community, mm -hmm. known to the other officers. And yeah, if they have to make an arrest or they observe a motor vehicle violation, they have to call for a full-time sworn officer mm -hmm. to take the enforcement action. Is there any contract language related to <clears throat> the department use? Any contract language related to the use of special officers? It's in our... Administration, administration operations manual. Oh, okay. Oh, you're talking about employment rights? Yeah, well, and the rights of the department to use them. As oh, oh, it's all spelled out in our accreditation administration operations manual. The specific duties that they can only be assigned to, the, okay. et cetera. In terms of employment, there are employees that will. Okay. You're talking bargaining rights. I was actually talking about whether there were contractual, whether there was contractual language that allowed or disallowed the use of special officers in different contexts. But no, that's state law. Oh. That's state law and accreditation regulations. Okay. Yeah. So they, they get, they're used for ceremonial well, events. Well, the supplement are control. people on, you know, like you said, inexpensive but well-skilled crowd yeah. control. And, and the benefit of them making 12 bucks an hour is they can also work outside details, traffic control, which obviously is at the higher rate. Uh -huh. And we don't have enough of our own full-time people to cover that. We bring people in from other communities to work for our jobs because we have so many of them. So while they're retired, they get the benefit of earning up to their 380 hours under the retirement cap. <clears throat> they can't exceed that. Oh, 480, I'm sorry. Or the dollar value between the difference of the retirement rate and what the current incumbent is in their position at the time. So they can also do road details. So just yep. Yep. Traffic control. Traffic control. Crowd control. But if somebody goes, they they can't. They can just direct traffic. If someone to, if someone has a violation, they can't. They've got to call. Them. They can stop the call car and call for a cruiser. Right. Or the common law citizen arresting, which are well versed on that works legally without putting us at liability. <laughs> Part of their training. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you for coming and speaking with us. Great. Um, any new business to be brought before the committee that was not reasonably anticipated? Yeah, actually, just a question. Um, just because there was a reference earlier to the... Um, to the ordinance regarding parking. Is that also referred to this committee? No, okay. it's just an ordinance. So okay. it'll come up at 6 o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, hearing no other new business, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. okay. Aye. So we can get a coffee. Our stuff's all safe here. Yeah. Um, you go after that, but this door, there's